right, y'all. Welcome to the launch of Volume 2. And I know, I know. I said Volume 2 will be available on August 20th. It looks like I'm a month early, basically. And, uh, hey, who's going to complain, right? So I didn't expect that I was going to finish so soon. But it just goes to show people that uh, I'm serious about this. See, if you need compliments from your little hunchback friends on Discord to stay cooking, to keep going, then you don't love this. You're not a real, true, devoted individual to this craft. You're somebody who's using this craft in order to have friends, in order to have people to talk to about what you like, but you don't love it enough to actually commit yourself, right? In your room all by yourself to, dr to draw, to break your back, break your hands, right? Uh, to finish the product. Instead, you want to do the bare minimum so that you can get compliments for, from your friends. You want to draw character designs for five years and say, look, I just designed this character. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Oh, look, I just designed this castle. It's going to be used here. It's going to be used there. But you never bring all those elements together. You never put all those elements in the book. You never finish anything because you don't have to because you already get what you truly want, which is the compliments, the rewards as if you have completed something. You see here at Coffee Commons, we don't do that. If you're here, I expect you that you are a person who wants to finish their product. I expect you that you're a person who takes this thing serious, who actually wants to inspire people. If you're here to just hate, you're a piece of trash and should be thrown in the ocean, right? If you're here to just guzzle up the dopamine, then you're also just a piece of trash. There only has to be two reasons you're here. To learn, right? To learn and to actually apply what you learn. That's it. Ain't no other reason. You're here to learn and you're here to apply. If you just want to learn because you're a genuine consumer, that's fine because that means you support genuine creators such as myself and the MANA movement. That's cool. But for those who claim to be artists, I expect you to apply what you learn. Not making up excuses all the damn time to all the hunchbacks. I saw a hunchback recently uh, talking smack, whether it was Twitter or Facebook, I don't know. He'd be saying, you know, uh, I rock with the Ogo squad, uh, people from Onsugo. I just hate coffee. He's, he's this and that. I'm like, bruh, look, man, you still watch me, though. You hate me, but you're still watching. And guess what? You ain't finishing nothing. I am a month ahead of schedule. And I finished this product. What you talking about? What you talking about, hunchback? Right? Best believe I'm going to give my own self a pat on the back because ain't nobody here going to be like, man, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. Like, you work hard, bro. Man, here's some cookies. Nobody giving me no cookies, right? No cookies. Grandma ain't here baking them for me. Luckily, though, I did go buy some cookies the other day, so I don't need grandma. She tried to kill me anyway. But ultimately, I don't need nobody giving me cookies and pats on the back that well done, man. I don't need nobody to do that. I'm doing this because it's who I am. Stay tuned for those who are on Patreon for the video about staying true to yourself. Because a lot of y'all just don't know who you are because you never went through the adversity of real life so that you can forge your proper character. But anyway, so we're going to be going through some pages of volume two. Um, I want to show, well, chapter nine and the last chapter, chapter 16, uh, some improvements, what I was thinking about and stuff like that. So it is available now. You can go, if you want to support, you can go buy volume two right now, digital version, link in the description box for 12 bucks. I know they're going to be a hunchback saying, no, that's too much. 
Last one was 10 bucks. Yeah, whatever. This one is better. Okay, this one is better. And I feel that it is worth 12 bucks. So whatever. So this is uh, the opening. Uh, you know, authors, comments, greetings, everyone, blah, blah, blah. And you're reading the mana. So then we go to the second page. These are both covers completed and uh you can see that in this cover which is my favorite i added some kanji just some quotes um in japanese saying spectacular exciting a bloody whatever you know but it just looks cool just looks cool um i am i am satisfied with what i was able to finish you know uh, it took a while, but I suppose not really, because I actually did start chapter nine last year. So, uh, but ultimately I had to fix everything. So it was almost as if I was starting from scratch. After all, I had to remaster and apply all the, all the standards that are spoken about on this channel to chapter nine and 10. From chapter 11 onwards, I started to apply those very standards, uh, meeting and using the trinity of the manga standard and all the hunchbacks that were like, there's no such thing as standards. Well, guess what? You wanna be part of Ogo? You wanna rock with the manga movement? There are standards. And guess what? You're gonna have to go through me if you want to even be inside of Ogo. There is no getting over coffee. You can hate me as much as you want, but you better learn to love me because I have a say also in who gets chosen in the Onsulgo uh, catalog. That's right. I'm one of the three, I mean, one of the four judges, the four kings who decide who gonna enter the damn kingdom. So put some respect on my name, hunchback. All right, you better get to work and stop hunching over. Get to work. So anyway, uh, again, these are the two volume covers. You see Irene here with her shattered swords. You can see the shards there. I added Jacob, I added uh, Arthur, Charlotte, and uh, Lisa over there. This one is cool, you know, I like these sort of covers, mostly inspired by Bleach. You know, in Bleach, most of them in the early stages was just the character and with a white background. Yeah. With this one, however, I would say it is inspired by some indie manga. I mean, indie American comics that I've seen from Image. I don't know how to properly explain it, but they always have so many things happening. But at the same time, I did use reference from a Japanese manga for this, you know, but ultimately a lot of uh, Indian American books also use this sort of layout. Okie doke, so we jump into chapter nine immediately. So if you've read chapter nine on Webtoons, yeah, well, it was hard to actually see the whole page, I suppose, unless you zoom out. Um, but here you can see everything nicely zoomed out. Um, the cover for chapter nine, because the first one I did, I was rushing and I was like, nah, let me make a new one. Let me make uh, Lisa really cool. And so I did. And um, we start off with this page here where Jacob is pretty much relaying what he's been up to ever since he lost his fight with Asker and what his plans are. And he decided to rededicate himself to his mission of killing Dracula. Even though deep down he suspects that, yeah, maybe I can't. And he's deluding himself in desperate hope. So he's been training in Soul Sync ever since, right? So Soul Sync is those, I suppose, who haven't read uh, the series yet. It is when Lisa the fairy merges with Jacob. And by them two merging, it allows Jacob to have access to using mana, right? Interesting. Mana movement and mana magic system sort of thing. Yeah. So basically, 
vampires can't use uh they can't use mana at all right and humans can't use it also but there are certain humans who are called mage mages who use magecraft they have some access to mana but it comes with severe consequences right they are other vampires such as Jacob, I mean, Dracula's children, which you'll see in chapter 16, who use a different type of other craft. But ultimately, when Lisa merges with Jacob, they have access to using mana, and Jacob will slowly unlock some new moves, new powers, and whatnot. So for this page, um, I did remove some things that were at this at that time if you read on webtoons there was a lot of black right i was only then experimenting with contrast because i had read this other guy's comic and i really liked how much contrast there was over there and i was experimenting then i realized that now nah, man look this is all over the place um you can just put the bare minimum so I removed a few things and I made it passable, okay? Y'all remember passable, right? It's just gotta have the full elements, gotta have that panel flow, gotta have that contrast, gotta have that facial expression, and got to have, darn. What is the fourth one? Damn it. Oh, I don't even have it on this computer. But ultimately, those four principles, facial expression, contrast, panel flow and composition yes composition and for, for composition actually i redrew lisa here because the pose she had in the beginning i didn't like it fell a bit stiff so they start off training and in this world because they're in jacob's mind right lisa is really strong and jacob is starting to wonder that wait a minute something's off here why the heck is this woman so strong? Because he says even, even here, and it's in this place I feel most comfortable. But I've started to wonder, Lisa seems to be more than just a fairy, like she's hiding something from me. Indeed, Lisa is more than just a fairy. But that is going to be revealed much further down the line. You know, it's gonna be a huge shock to what she really is Oh man, it's going to be so cool. So I look forward to uh, getting to that point. And so the battle begins. And she's using some um, weird weapon over there. And uh, the battle begins. And this is a new page that I added. <clears throat> I added like, I think, uh, six new pages. So Jacob hits her weapon away and now she's left with just her hands but she don't mind and jacob swings yet more but lisa dodges and uses her head to smack away his weapon now at first we were like wait isn't irene the only person who can use her hair for crazy things um well no lisa's power is almost almost unlimited i mean she is a fairy after all but Fairies cannot have any direct involvement with human conflicts like that. However, her helping Jacob in a way, um, it's not a direct involvement in which she's fighting in his stead, fighting for him, choosing a side to some extent, you know? So no, um, in her, in Jacob's mind here, this is when she can use a lot of her power because in the real world she can only transform into a little girl and in fairy mode and she can't really manifest most of her powers in the real world and so jacob says well that's a new one and she says is that another way of admitting defeat not a chance and then they go at it hand-to-hand -hand combat now how I designed Lisa, right? I have said that the characters that I have created are characters whom I wish were around me. 
right? Especially female characters. A lot of dudes just want to create waifus. And she's just going to make you a sandwich. She's just going to, you know, do whatever. But I'm like, that's too easy and, and it gets boring. A female that is of great value to a man of substance is a female who can hold a conversation. A female who has a good sense of humor. A female who's got wit. You know, that is one heck of a lady, right? And I design all my females to have this wit, to have a sense of humor, to be a bit sassy, but not in a toxic way, right? I design characters whom you want to be around, whom you wish actually existed, you know? So hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Jacob is on the defense here, blocking everything, Lisa just unleashing a barrage. And then she says, well, how about we see how far your soul sphere has developed, huh? Let's go. Now, the soul sphere was revealed in chapter four, uh, as additional pages, actually, that serves, I mean, people won't say, oh, nigga, you just put a Rasengan up in here. Well, man, ain't nothing new anymore, right? It's all about okay, it looks like a Rasengan, but how's it created? Where is it from? How, you, 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 know, you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, what are the foundations of this Rasengan lookalike versus the actual foundations of the real Rasengan in Naruto, you know? So, yeah, things are, have been used, everything has been used, y'all. It's just how you use it now and the foundation of what it is. So, they uh, unleash the soul sphere. And once again, it is Lisa that is overpowering Jacob. And by the way, the soul sphere is not this big in reality because again, they're in Jacob's mind. So the amount of energy or the scale of attacks in his mind are much bigger because they are not restrained by the physics of reality. In order for Jacob to unleash an attack as devastating as it is in his mind, he needs more training, right? And here he begins to say, how the hell is she so strong? She continues to overpower him and boom, a, an explosion takes place. They both grab their weapons and they go at it once more. But it seems like Jacob is on the offense this time, a little bit, and uh, he jumps out of the way and activates the soul charge. Now the soul charge, right? In chapter two, Jacob unleashed the bloody hurricane. And in chapter three, Lisa said he wasn't supposed to because ha using mana without Lisa merging with him is detrimental to your own body, right? So he needs Lisa to sustainably use mana. If he uses mana without her, yeah, he's gonna die or hurt himself severely. So with a soul charge, right? Because he also unleashed a, um, a bloody slash in chapter one without it being soul charged. Now look at it when it is soul charged, it has an enormous, um, amount of damage and amount of scale it's enormous right so these are the benefits of being in soul sync uh but this level of scale thus far is only you know um access through if he's in his mind but he'll get stronger so he unleashes it we we'll see some smoke and debris over here and Lisa just shattered his sword with ease. And of course, he's shocked, right? And here, he even says it broke and she did it with such ease. And she says, well, good job for today. That's enough for today. And he takes it as an insult. But it is here then he says, you know what? Something's off here, woman, right? What exactly are you? Let's zoom in a little bit. The heck is going on? 
Come on, man. In fact, I think it's time you tell me what you really are. Clearly, you're more powerful than I am, but how? How is it that you even still exist? Fairies were wiped out decades before the meteor destroyed Earth 1. And she says, sorry, but that's it's not yet the right time to tell you this. And Jacob flips out. He flips out because he remembers that this whole timing thing is what got his parents killed, basically. And he says, time, don't give me that. My father said the same thing. It was his reason for withholding information from me. And then what happened? He died. Imagine if he told me, maybe I could have seen Dracula coming and saved him. But no, it's all about this timing garbage. Now, I extrapolated from reality in this little scuffle between the two. Because I remember people used to tell me that it is all about timing. It's all about timing. And I have told you guys, it is all about timing. And it's true. It really is all about timing. If we look at the end of World War II and Japan was somewhat wrecked, but it made a deal with the US to be a capitalist society and all that. I ain't saying capitalism is horrible, but it ain't perfect, but neither is socialism. Um, and uh, the timing was perfect for new things to be born because those who survived, right? Those who survived the, the, the war, they were able to extrapolate from those experiences. So, so by extrapolating from those experiences, of course, they had great stories to tell. All about timing. There was a fall, right? And then a reset. And that's how things are in society. There has to be a rise and a fall. When things fall apart and people reflect what they build they look to the past and see what they can improve on. That's just how it works. So this part was an extrapolation from reality. Um, Lisa then says, oh boy, what a rowdy dude this dude is. I can't really reveal to him what I am. She mentions here the King of Light, saying the King of Light allowed some of us to stay here under this condition. And the other one, but what should I do now? I don't know anyone who's picked up on that. Um, but hey, I've said before that in the West, on YouTube, most people buy your product because they just want to support you. They, they, they don't really have to be real fans of what you do. They just want to support you because they like you, I suppose. Um, then this page, man, I don't know why it got a load like that. So Jacob here being a spoiled brat saying, fine, I'm off then. I have training with Alex soon anyway. So much for being honest with each other. And Lisa says, okay, tell me one thing. In these past 200 years, have I given you any reason not to trust me? And he says, I guess not. Exactly. Honestly, if it were anyone else, they'd call you a spoiled brat who expects things to conform to his will. And that's mostly the hunchbacks, right? Spoiled brats who never got an ass whipping and uh, they expect people to bow the knee to them. Absolutely not. Instead, though, Lisa says, um, but I'm not. Instead, I'm here doing my best to help you. Right? She says, I'm not, but I'm not. I'm not, but instead, I'm here doing my best to help you. What I really am or not shouldn't matter. It doesn't apply to your development anyway. It's not like I owe you, you owe me. So Lisa knows how to tune people. She can put you in your place. And I've kind of have not seen many characters that are able to do this. You know, most manga, the dialogue is not very organic. You know, it just doesn't feel real. Like 
it doesn't feel as if it's a conversation you could ever have in the real world, honestly. So what I tried to do was create dialogue that could feel real, that could sound like, yeah, this is something that can be said in the real world. Somebody with good emotional intelligence, this is something they would say, you know, so yeah. And then Jacob realizes his mistake and says, well, fine, I'll trust you then. But I was just afraid that I might lose you too. So fine, I'll trust you. And then, right, she says, well, don't worry about that. Uh, fairies can't die anyways. They can only be sealed away or forfeit their own lives. And then she gives him a hug. So I'll be right here with you forever. I'll never have... I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, so don't worry so much anymore. Now, this moment is very significant. This is the first time Jacob has gotten a hug in 200 years. The last hug he got, obviously, was from his mother when they were alive 200 years ago. So he did not expect this, and uh, yeah, you can see how happy he is over here. This moment really was nice. And I remember making a video saying, I think the story can end here. Because initially, I created this mana in order to get over a screw over, to process the trauma, right? A lot of people don't process their trauma. They just keep it locked away down there and then they turn into hunchbacks and they lose self-awareness and they are complete menaces to society, right? You gotta process your trauma whatever the hell happened to you, fix it. How I processed it was creating a story such as this. And by this chapter, I had processed all the bad stuff. And I was like, you know, it can end here, <clears throat> but it doesn't. So, yay, happy hugs, la 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 la. And uh, this is the end of chapter nine. Now, tomorrow, I will be releasing the album for Bloody Hell, which is this right here. Um, this is an AI album because the two human beings I hired screwed me over. What was I supposed to do, right? So this album is not for sale because it's AI. Um, I'm not a musician. I can't produce. I can't do none of that. So this thing will serve as a good reference point one day if some video game company says hmm bloody hell looks pretty cool let's see what you got i can give them the soundtrack and be like oh well here's a sample of uh what you can tell your composers to do you know so it's got 13 tracks and uh i'm gonna release it tomorrow and the cover of it i'm really proud of it so stay tuned for that so let's jump to the last chapter and uh, this is chapter 10, some Alex action. I had not done a cover of Alex. I will say this though, criticizing myself here, is that my consistency of how the weapons look like is off. It's off because I kind of, I'm kind of lazy to, to draw weapons or to draw swords. So Alex's sword kind of looks different all the time sorry about that i'm just it's just a big struggle for me to like make it look like what's in my head for whatever reason and i know others can say use reference trust me i don't when i use reference i don't copy it one billion percent i just can't because that's like stealing the whole thing i gotta make it my own so eventually i'll nail it down as to like what his sword is actually gonna look like Jacob's sword changed as well um, because the other one got stolen by Ask, I suppose. But he is kind of going to get it back some way. I don't want to spoil how, but he's actually going to get it back sooner in the next couple of chapters. So let's jump, 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 jump all the way to chapter... 16. It's kind of crazy. I'm on chapter 16. Man, it feels good reaching this number. Whoever is still 
lollygagging. Man, I don't know what the heck you're doing. Oh, that's right. You're just being a fraud. You don't mean to be a real mana artist. Even if you want to call yourself a manga artist, man, do you really qualify though? Your work ethic definitely just ain't complying with the standards of a true manga artist's work ethic. Ah, oh, damn it. Why is it taking 400 years? Let us open this sidebar. Um, oh man, this ain't good. Okay, I knew something like this would happen. So let's just go to the pictures right here. So this is uh, the cover for chapter 16. This is Arya introduced in chapter 10. And she is the one or the reason that the first arc will be kicked off. Now, with Arya, I had already discussed, I think, on a um, Patreon video. Y'all want to get more bloody hell action? It's on Patreon, right? That she is, well, a tortured soul. And um, she's a product. Man, I don't want to share that on YouTube. But ultimately, her story is grim. And she got issues. Now, I had said that bloody hell is not the type of story that has time for romance but i was really rethinking it and i was like man who can like who though because i know jacob and lisa but uh fairies and humans or vampires are not supposed to be a thing doesn't mean it can't happen it just means they should it shouldn't happen and it won't happen between jacob and lisa but they do make a good couple now, don't they? But ultimately, I would like to make Arya a romantic interest for Jacob. However, I'm not sure who's supposed to like who. Initially, I did want Jacob to like her. Why? Because she reminds him of himself. What he used to be. Broken, destroyed, and not whole at all. So seeing Arya... He wants to save her, but we don't do that simp action up in here, right? So I'll still have to think about how can I make it organic to some extent. I think, I think I'll just make Arya admire Jacob for getting over so much. Um, but as to how they want to move forward, I don't know. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm not going to force it. So. We open up with the Big Bang outside because Alex just stopped a huge blast with his ma Magecraft and we see Arya once again. And she says, what the hell was that? She runs to the window and sees what the heck is going on. See y'all, this is the power of passable, right? They, there's not much detail here, but it's detailed enough. You can be satisfied looking at this. The panel flow, I just achieved the full standard of passable. This is not a compromise of professional standard. It is a, it is a simplification of it. I put the facial expressions there, vivid as heck, so you know what she be feeling. I put them panel flows. I put the contrast, and I put the composition. I be cooking it up properly all right i am adhering to my own standards that i share whatever hunchback wants to say i don't is high on drugs and should make a video about how much of a hypocrite that i am and then we are brought here outside where irene has been smacked uh, near a tree and jacob is in hot pursuit on to save her but Charlotte is a complete monster and says, don't interfere, and smacks him in the face. We see Peter here yelling out to Jacob, wanting to uh, make a move, but he doesn't. And Peter is a human being, right? But he's got a special weapon that makes him somewhat of a threat. And his backstory is going to be so cool. And then we see Irene over here looking totally shocked, saying, no ways, Jacob. And even Charlotte is shocked. The fact that Jacob caught her punch. And he says, who the hell are you supposed to be? 
And we see Irene here thinking to herself, I can't believe what I'm seeing. What did Jacob suddenly, or when did Jacob suddenly get so strong? Catching Charlotte's strike with just one hand, I doubt that was a killing blow, but still, not even I could have caught it in one hand. I guess the training with Alex must have paid off. So, does this mean that Jacob is stronger than Irene? Well, the next page explains that it's not that he's stronger, but he does have a advantage, right? Which will be explained in the next page. Then she says, no, wait, there's actually something different about him. Now, yeah, something different about him because normally he'd rampage at the sight of any vampire, but strangely not this time. Did I miss something? I wonder what changed. Now in chapter 12, which is one of my favorite uh, chapters, let's see if I can just open it here. Oh, it would still have to load, man. In fact, this is chapter 12. Yeah. This is chapter 12. In fact, this last page is good enough. At the end of chapter 12, Jacob comes back from a near death experience totally different. Irene wasn't here to see this happen, right? For the first time, he's actually genuinely smiling, right? So, she says, I wonder what changed. Well, for those who read chapter um, 12, you know. Um, if you haven't, you can go buy the volume right now. And so we are transported into Jacob's inner world and uh, Lisa looking at the soul tree, which is something that came about after his, well, new change. And uh, she explains what the soul tree does. She says, once again, thanks to the soul tree's vines now firmly planted in your soul, your reflexes are three times faster than what they once were. Before, the irregular flow of mana throughout your body was greatly limiting the distribution of mana from your soul energy to your body's movements. But now it's whole. See, before his flow of mana was irregular. But now because it's got the soul tree, well, it's wholesome, it's flowing correctly. And because of this, he has achieved a new power called the soul berry. Aside from increased reflexes, there is an additional advantage to unlocking the soul tree. The soul barrier, an invisible shield that slows down the speed of incoming attacks, whether it be physical, attacks or magecraft. Also, anything that enters the barrier gets the strength of its impact decreased by 20%, meaning any attack that may cause critical damage is greatly reduced. So this is advantage, new advantage, that Jacob has. It's not that he's physically stronger yet uh, than Irene, it's just when he's in soul sync because of this new barrier, well, he pretty much gets to slow down time, anything that steps into the barrier and the damage is decreased. Then Lisa says, and this is only the beginning. With further training, we can increase the barrier's radius and damage reduction. And we jump back to Jacob and he says, I ask you a question, who are you? He doesn't know that Irene has symptoms. Irene has always kept things to herself so he actually doesn't know. And Charlotte just ain't having it, let go. And Jacob says, oh white. Man, that old white killed me, bro. When I put that there and I was reading it after, it felt like, it felt so hardcore, man. It felt like, man, this dude ain't playing. And I'm the one who wrote it. So that was really cool. I found myself giggling in the corner like, oh man. That is so cool, man. I want to be like Jacob. Yeah. So it's really nice the fact that um, you can create characters that inspire yourself. It's really cool. And uh, Charlotte says, or die if you don't want to let me go. And her attack is blocked by 
Alex because he just landed from the attack he launched. And he says, long time no see, cousin. Care to explain the reason for your visit? And she says, impressive. Both you and Irene's pet rat managed to counter me well. But we both know not to get me so worked up, cousin. But you know what? I'll just kill you both. And uh, yeah, Alex freaks out here because even Alex doesn't, Alex is very strong, but his real advantage is his magecraft. Because he can control the air, he could just suck all the oxygen out of you. But people like Charlotte, I should say vampires like Charlotte, very high level vampires, they don't actually breathe the air. So he actually has no real power. He's physically weaker than them and his key trump card isn't going to work. He does have a supernova attack, which he will use on King Arthur. I can't wait to get to that point because the whole point of Charlotte's siblings, I mean, Irene's siblings coming here is to actually tell Irene and everybody else that, look, we have entered the final decade. The final war is going to commence because now the boy king, the one light of the world, is here and he's a big threat to our father, Dracula. So decide, right, who you will be fighting for. They're actually here to deliver a message, but things get out of control. So, um, yeah, as for why Alex is going to want to kill King Arthur, well, you're going to have to wait and find out. So she powers up here and uh, others are going to say, oh, here we go. This is totally Dragon Ball ripoff, blah, blah, blah. Man, look, everything's a ripoff, okay? Everything. But I did not rip it off verbatim. And as I said, the foundation of whatever Rasengan lookalike thing you, you got in your story can't be the same as Naruto. You can't have a bat that looks exactly like the one in Chainsaw Man. You can't copy exactly what's already there as somebody we know, right? So, please. Any hunchback who's gonna try and say that, it's like, first of all, you didn't even read this chapter, so shut the F up, okay? And I would like, I or I dare, I dare any hunchback to make a video. Uh, make a video reviewing this mana. Go ahead, I dare you. But you won't, because you can't. And she powers up, flies to the sky. Can she actually fly? Not really. She can float, but she can't fly. And she unleashes the abyss cannon. She says, I told you not to get in my way. Now you can all go straight to hell. We see Elita here warning Jacob that that attack is abyss craft, a type of dark mana only Dracula's kin can use. Don't let it touch you or hit the ground. It's anti-life in nature. So this thing is almost like a black hole. Um, it is best that you don't let it touch you or let it hit the ground. Because depending on how much abyss craft energy is in it, the amount of destruction um, that it can uh, produce is severely high. It will just disintegrate anything in front of it. But Jacob is not fearful. Can't touch it, you say? Fine, I'll just blow it into space then with the bloody hurricane. Man, I just pictured this moment as if it was animated with the intense music and Jacob's voice actor saying that exact line. Man, it was so cool. Then we see Irene powering up because she can use her hair to fly. She says, that won't work, I'll handle it. But Alex says, but you can't use abyss craft. You have a disease, remember? And she says, thinking to herself, that's true. If I use too much of it, it'll damage my brain and central nervous system. So what we see here, she says, I got three abyss charged bloody impacts in me. So I'll counter this. I'll unleash an equal amount of mana into my first bloody impact. 
See, maybe some have wondered, how is it that Irene knows the bloody, the whole bloody technique at all? Well, who do you think taught Jacob how to fight? It was her. The bloody hell, or the bloody hurricane, is her technique. The bloody impact is her technique also, right? It is Jacob who learned these attacks from her. Then she says, this should cancel out Charlotte's attack so it doesn't hit the ground. And she, we see here winding it up and punching it and pushing herself to the mass, max. Some of her armor rips off and some of her clothing tears. And she says, a discharge bloody impact. Um, I did some research on how to draw explosions. I mostly looked at um, Seven Deadly Sins. You guys should check out how the guy draws explosions, man. It's something else. Uh, so I did my best. It does look better than prior explosions that I've used to draw. So I'm going to add more sauce to it in newer pages and everything. So she punches it and it cancels out. But then Jacob yells, look out. And she gets punched in the gut by Charlotte. And Jacob's totally losing it. And uh, even Alex says, bro, calm down. Irene can handle herself. Charlotte is strong, yes, but Irene isn't a pushover. She's luring Charlotte away from the villa so it won't be destroyed. Man, I'm telling you, the fight I got planned between Charlotte and Irene it's gonna be cool. And it's gonna be cool because it's like, why, if they are sisters, why is Charlotte such a flippin' bully? Why is she doing this? Why is she beating up her sister like this? Her sister is older and weaker. Shouldn't she have mercy? No, vampires have no mercy. So we had a moment in chapter 10 where Irene was questioning, what's the point of being a vampire? An existential, existential crisis that she's going through because her disease allows her to contemplate and reflect. She is not controlled by her stomach anymore. And because she's kept alive by Lisa, a few of Lisa's attributes are in her, right? And so we're going to find out what makes a vampire a vampire and what a vampire who doesn't want to be a monster also looks like, right? But yes, someone is going to die in this little scuffle. And I mean, so, I won't say who it is, but it is going to have an impact. It is going to be emotional. Uh, who is it going to be? It's nobody you expect, really, but I'm going to make it impactful. It's going to have so much heart. And it's also going to affect Jacob. And it's his reaction to this whole thing of life. But I thought, I thought life was supposed to get easier now. Now that I'm whole. Now that I'm better. Now that I'm not angry and filled with revenge. I thought life would get better. But no. Dracula is going to show up. And he's going to taunt the living life out of him. It's going to be so bad. Lisa's going to get hurt. She can't die, no, but, oh man, I even thought of the facial expression of like, oh, dude, it's going to be bad. Really, really, really bad. Uh, each time you think you just win or you made an achievement or milestone, things just get worse because that's how life is. I'm extrapolating from reality because I remember each time I celebrated somewhat what felt like progress everything just fell upside down and i was like what the hell is going on you know and uh others would say oh nah bro you too jaded i'm like look man if i was just sitting there smoking weed all day and uh drinking five bottles and just twerking yeah then i'd be like you but because i'm not and i'm actually trying to do something here this is the result you know but anyway Alex says, the, the real threat was never Charlotte anyways, it was him. Stefan appears with his dragon. 
And uh, it is here where they are going to explain as to like, okay, why are we really here? And so on. And Jacob is going to kind of lose it. He's not really going to lose it like how he used to, but it's going to be so cool to show his maturity. In only 16 chapters, the pacing of the story was executed fairly well. If you ask me how do you properly uh, create good pacing, I cannot articulate it as of yet. You know, I, not yet, I can't. But eventually I will. But anyway, so this is volume two of Bloody Hell, available now in the description box. Go ahead and buy it, right? Go ahead and read it. Go ahead and share it. And if you don't want the digital version, I suppose you can buy the physical version when it's in American comic book stores starting next month in the city of Chicago. Don't worry, it's going to be available nationwide as well because we are working real hard at Go. We got that progress happening, right? So yeah, y'all, you gotta put in the work. Again, if you're here to serve just as a uh, consumer and you only want dopamine, you're a hunchback, straight up. I told you that this channel is for two things. It's for you to come and learn and for you to apply what you learn. Plain and simple. Can't be out here lollygagging, just drinking mama's milk and not doing anything else in life. You are a disgrace, if that is you. For all of those who want to bootlick the other members of Unsulgo but still hate me, that makes no sense, man. I'm part of that team. So if you respect everybody there, you better put some respect on my name also, right? But whatever, I ain't gonna force you for that. I don't care what no hunchback thinks anyways. Just a hunchback, what can you do? So again, tomorrow the soundtrack will be released. It is AI, it's not gonna be for sale, but it's gonna be really cool. I like it. I wish the composers I hired didn't screw me over, man. But I think that was one of the other things that made me recently, you know, down under. Um, I was just bummed out that, man, I put so much faith in these people. And one of them is a close friend and he let me down. Even though I was paying, you know what? You just gotta do it yourself. But some things you cannot do it yourself, such as building a brand a big brand. So if y'all want to create mana, I suggest you uh, follow the standards and uh, go ahead and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Follow me, follow Seji, follow Unsulgo itself on Instagram. I'll put it in the description box. And um, when the Oh yeah, subscribe of course to our online magazine or buy the physical magazines when they are available next month in stores. You can't do it by yourself, people. Okay? You gotta be a part of something. You just move better when you are in a unit. Right? You just move better. But ultimately, when it comes to the actual work itself that you got to produce, yeah, you gotta do that yourself. Uh, mama shouldn't have to be there giving you some milk and cookies, right? Nobody should need to be patting you on the back that your only source of stamina is if your friends complimented you. That should not be the case. If this is still you, you ain't serious. You don't know who you are and you probably never will. You're not interested in discovering who you're meant to be because it's too difficult and in order to discover who you're meant to be, requires you to participate in the challenges that are outside your comfort zone. And if you are still stuck in your comfort zone, you will not develop and you will be incapable of telling meaningful, wholesome stories that can have a positive impact. You will only extrapolate from popular series, right? That people will be able to tell that, yeah, you straight up ripped this off. 
and you will have nothing to say. You will be nothing but a goblin, a gargoyle, a golem, and a ghoul, and a hunchback, and a fishwife. And all those types of people have no place, have no place in society at all. You're meant to just work in the field with chains around your ankles and picking that cotton. That's all you're good for, damn hunchback, right? You don't want to put in the work, fine. Go pick the cotton and shut the hell up. Go eat a watermelon when you're done, all right? So that's it for now. Long video, but filled with information. You want more bloody hell action? Check out my Patreon. Go ahead and buy volume one, buy volume two. Volume three will commence production in September, but you can keep reading some more bloody hell if you subscribe on our Onsulgo magazine. Or once again, subscribe to Coffee if you want more mana. Subscribe to Seji if you want more mana in detail, cause here, you know Coffee Comics, man. I talk about a lot of things. I'm a roast people talk about black rock and I'll review people stuff it's the whole caffeine shebang over here so hunchback i'll see you soon yeah i'm gonna see you soon and to all the supporters get back to work y'all you know how it is peace <laughs>